actually I was looking at the list and I could see like, oh no, not only just one, two, three, four. And uh, people were able to recognize those things, right? So, and, and that's very good. Uh, our goal is to just to recognize and slowly begin to see what is unfolding the next, right? So uh, let's just be patient toward it. And then I think let's ask the Holy Spirit to reveal more and then to minister to us. And, and, uh, and also like uh, we need to help ourselves not try to, you know, like, you know, right away, like offer help to that person or, or you know, preach or, you know, do, let's more try to like, you know, just, just maybe like we can ask good questions, like, you know, more ask, asking more questions about she or he can share more than, than preaching and teaching that person. One of the things that <clears throat> the preacher, uh, you know, the teacher, uh, Peter Scagerio, highlighted on the, the key passage for today was the Samuel from Samuel, first Samuel, uh, chapter 15 and verses, uh, chapter 15, basically chapter 15, right? So in that chapter, in that Samuel's, uh, you know, the, 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 the Saul's uh, story, what we saw was that Saul, uh, God had actually um, assigned Saul, the king Saul, to go on a mission to uh, completely destroy the, you know, it says in verse 18, the Amalekites, the wicked people, right? And then, and everything that belongs to them. And you see that Saul does obey God's voice, but partially, not completely. And, uh, and because of that, God had to send Samuel to confirm Saul, the king of Israel, the first king of Israel. But even when Samuel, Samuel confirms him, then what happens? Saul were not readily, he was not readily like he was there to admit his, his fault, right? But rather, he, what he does, he blames the other. You know, he blames his soldier. It was not me, it was the soldier. They took the, the things, right? And for them, I took it. So you can see that happen. And then Samuel just like, you know, like screaming out, out loud in, in rage and saying, that is enough. That is enough. You cannot pretend anymore. You know, you cannot pretend anymore. Like this two-sided life, like masked life. And you cannot live this life anymore. Um, and... I think from this passage, uh, even like tying with the, uh, with the teacher, Peter, one of the things that God was really wanting from Saul's life was his heart, his heart's obedience to God. Really, more than the sacrifices, more than the things that he could do, or he thinks that is seemingly that, is, that, that was right before God, you know? God was wanting his heart to be fully, fully committed, to be fully delighted delighting in the lord in the lord himself and i think that's a very serious issue for us as well you know is it not right like you know we are so tempted to do things for god or to do things for others or even to engage ourselves with things or to run away from the conflict run away from the things and not really not really bringing those things to god which are actually very important in our lives and god really wants to address that problem those things that we are struggling in our lives he wants to really go deep down into our heart or in fact like in samuel like the 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 theme you know of the the heart rendering or presenting our heart comes again and again even while anointing uh, david you know samuel was 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 looking for a people like was was able bodied right but then god says i would not the god looks at the heart not the outer appearance so the heart matters to god and and and, and, and therefore, obedience is costly, right? Obedience is costly because disobedience costs us as well. Because, because of disobedience, like Saul's disobedience cost him, not just like his kingdom, like he was, he was dethroned from being a king. But I do believe that God loved him as a person, right? And I believe that if he, if he had repented before God, completely surrendered before God, God would have restored him completely, right? And I think in our failures, in our own mistakes in our own you know like not being completely obedient to god god meets us and he makes a way for us to be obedient to him completely and and one of the applications that that peter suggests is slowing down right the slowing down because slowing down matters for us especially in a city like hong kong it is very difficult for us to slow down very difficult for us to slow down in fact i was like one of the the one of the, the symptoms that I was I, I could resonate with myself was so much that I would do things that God has not asked me to do, you know, and and then I had to work that out. Even that even last week, I was taking a video of someone and then it was 
trying to make that appointment in the middle of the night. And I was thinking over and over, how can I make this happen? How can I do this? And I was thinking like, wait, you know, you're going through EHS. <laughs> and are you trying to do over overwork or are you trying to do this? Because God has has this like been, you know, is God asking to do, you know, this thing? And I and I thought, oh no, maybe not. Then for the first time, I would say, like, no, I, I'm not gonna do this. You know? I'm not gonna do this. Because I maybe God is not upset with me if I don't do this. And 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 then not 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 even my 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 wife and and they are, they will be happy, and that day actually I went home early to spend time with my family, and then uh, I had a good time, and at the same time I could spend time knowing that oh I should spend time with God, and 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 listen from Him more, but but even with that God actually allowed that particular thing to happen, you know, so and I could see like God is working in my own life. And, and I do believe that ESS will richly bless you guys and, and uh, please share with your groups and with, with, with your group leaders. And slowing down is very important for us. And I think for the, for, uh, you know, out of many things today, I think one thing that we can take home is that, you know, how can we rest and how can we contemplate? Meaning like, how can we spend time with God? Slowing down, uh, not just because for the sake of slowing down, but just really like, you know, being with the Lord. The last, you know, Psalm 27, four verse comes out to us. And then I'm gonna read that verse on the screen. It is there. Can you please put it on the screen? <clears throat> um, Psalm 27, verse four, it says that, um, go down to it. Yes. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. I mean, like, what was the last time? When was the last time that you were gazing onto the beauty of the Lord? And then you were able to see him, right? Um, and th this really, like, sets, uh, you know, like, a tone for us, like, whether I was working for Lord and I was so tired um, versus, you know, whether I was really enjoying God in my life, right? Whether I was really enjoying God in my life. You know, coming to the church as well. It could be a work on Sunday. But, you know, what was the last time? When was the last time when you came to the church with the glad, with, with you know, rejoicing, with joy-filled heart and say, Lord, I'm here today. I want to thank you. And you went out in the same mood, you know, being glad and, and with, with grateful heart, right? So I want to remind all of us that uh, to be in that presence, to be, be able to hear God's voice and to be able to recognize where we have fallen deep inside in our heart, it requires us for us to intentionally hear his voice and to slow down uh, from what we are doing in our lives. And if it is we are not really aligned ourselves onto the word of God, and let us do so. Let us discern, you know, the two things that Samuel actually confronted in the case of Saul, the two sins, the sin of rebellion and the arrogance, the sin of rebellion and arrogance. And then throughout Saul's legacy, like he has been that person, like he would not listen to God but he would rather do on his own. Like, you know, things do on his own way, whatever fits, uh, seems, seems good to him, right? So in many ways, in many ways, maybe we are, we need to work that out, right? Maybe we are arrogant. Maybe, maybe in, in some ways we are not, we are, we have rebelled against God. And I think this time I'm gonna invite all of us to look into those things that, those areas of our life, those areas of our heart where we have rebelled against God, where we have gone, away from him, where we have not been really listening to God's voice, not, not been heeding to God's voice. That's the word that comes out. Samuel was telling Saul, you're not heeding. And it, would it not be better like to delight and to heed God's voice more than the sacrifices, right? So it's really like heeding God's voice. And I think maybe this time we can uh, check that out in our hearts, in our own lives as a reflection, reflective prayers time, prayer time. That God just wanna, I wanna discern my heart. Uh, and when I have rebelled or when I have gone, gone arrogant, I become arrogant, God, would you forgive me? I want to come back to you, God, and I, and I ask, Holy Spirit, would you just work in my heart, a deeper part of my heart, God? I want to be, be obedient to you, God, Father, Lord. Uh, just, just let us ask God for this time to, uh, to minister to, Holy Spirit minister to us right now. Father, thank you, God. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. We, wanna, we, we want to recognize the symptoms that that are wrecking our lives, that are affecting our lives. But at the same time, God, we wanna, we wanna be healed uh, from every after 
You want to say sins, God, Father. You want to recognize those things, God. Yeah, God, Father, the systems, the, the life, everything has made us so busy and it is so hard, Father, for us to even to sit and listen. Uh, but God, here we are right now that uh, you want to slow down. You want to rest in you, Jesus, Lord. Father, Lord, just, just, just asking you right now, would you slow us? Slow us where we have become arrogant. Yes, God, and rebellious to you, Jesus. Thank you, God.